Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. We are coming up on the November general election and today in this video we're going to be looking at one race in particular. The Texas Senate District which covers El Paso County, Huspeth County, Jeff Davis County, Culberson County, and Presidio County. We're going to be talking about several topics in this video today including healthcare, the response to COVID-19, immigration, and gun rights, just to name a few. Now this is a very long video, so I'm actually gonna be including a timestamp down below so that you can find each topic that we're gonna be discussing. Now I'm going to provide information on each candidate to the best of my ability. Now if a candidate or someone else reaches out to me to make a correction or further elaborate on something that I said, then I will provide that information down below in the description. So be sure to check there for updates on this. I gathered this information from candidates Facebook pages, websites, questionnaires, as well as interviews for TV and newspaper. Our current Texas state senator is actually retiring, so this is the first time that either of these two candidates has run for this position. Cesar Blanco is currently our District 75 representative in the Texas House. He's a native El Pasoan, Navy veteran, and UTEP graduate. He comes from a family of immigrants and military veterans. For his record of fighting for veterans' education opportunities and border communities, Texas Monthly named him one of the best legislators in Texas. He was elected to the Texas House in 2014, where he has continued to serve as a representative. Bethany Hatch describes herself as a third-generation El Pasoan, Texas Tech graduate, small business owner, and follower of Christ. She moved back to El Paso five years ago to start her business, a pet boarding facility in the Northeast, is a member of good standing of Coronado's Baptist Church, and is on the board of the Cardwell Foundation. Let's look at Blanco's response to COVID. He's been very vocal in supporting medical professionals who are caring for our community. He stays positive by thanking healthcare workers, essential employees like school cafeteria workers, grocery store workers, and farmers. He's been active in providing resources for those affected by the quarantine by providing information on unemployment, housing, child care, and food drives. He has even been volunteering with food banks to provide meals to those that are in need. He provides updated information on COVID cases, information on symptoms for COVID, how to get help, and information on hospitals and ventilators. He provides the community with information on how money is being used in El Paso to expand testing and even discuss how minorities are affected during these times. He's also been making sure that people do not forget about the census while COVID is happening. While COVID has been going on, Blanco has remained active in the community, always wearing a mask. Blanco has proposed passing medical expansion in Texas to address the health and economic impacts caused by COVID-19. He believes it would bring back $10 billion taxpayer dollars to the state. Since hospitals are struggling more and more with uninsured patients, he would also want to suspend student loans, evictions, and offer paid sick leave for COVID patients. He supports creating a statewide contact tracing strategy for COVID-19. He hopes to expand the use of technology in a post-COVID world where government bodies use video conferencing as a way to be more transparent and expand it for the public to have a safe and easy way to participate in open meetings. To address the economic crisis from COVID-19, Blanco is in favor of using Texas Rainy Day Fund, which he believes was created for instances just like this, and this could prevent the state from cutting essential services and programs. Blanco partnered with several donors to provide school supplies to children in need since COVID quarantine has caused four children to learn at home virtually. Hatch has been strongly against all COVID mandates and regulations since the beginning. Here you can see her standing with a homemade poster with the hashtag COVID hoax 2020. She has even been actively critical of her fellow party leader, Governor Greg Abbott, the Republican governor of Texas. Abbott has been criticized by Democrats for not doing enough for COVID, well, she believes that he's actually made too many regulations. She is very much against any mask requirements, going on to call it an absolutely worthless mandate and does nothing but provide our local officials with a false sense of accomplishment. She believes it is against a person's constitutional rights to be forced to wear a mask. The local El Paso Young Republicans have encouraged wearing masks and Hatch was unhappy with these sentiments. 
When social distancing was not being followed, Hatch made it clear that she believed the government would not have trouble enforcing regulations if they stopped making regulations altogether. The quarantine was enacted so that hospitals would not be overwhelmed and over capacity, allowing for beds to be available as needed. Unfortunately, Hatch did not share this understanding. She believes that, quote, the shutdown was to slow the spread so that the hospitals could prep. I do think it's unfortunate when a candidate does not make an effort to understand the medical part of COVID, especially when quite a lot of our healthcare relies on elected officials and their decisions that revolve around access to healthcare. Even though she posed with a COVID conspiracy poster, Hatch has been a supporter of hydroxychloroquine for treating COVID patients. She promoted Dr. Estella Emanuel, who believes that alien DNA is used in medical treatments, vaccines will stop people from being religious, the U.S. government is run by lizard people, and that endometriosis is caused by sex with demons. Hatch has been supportive of schools reopening and, of course, ending shutdowns all across the state for restaurants, bars, and anything else that has been affected. She's even encouraged people to not follow any quarantine rules if they so desire. When businesses were told to require people to wear masks, she stated that as a business owner herself, she would not follow this mandate from city and state. She was very much against contact tracing for COVID. It was interesting that she posted about losing a friend, Herman Cain, yet no mention of the fact that he did pass away from COVID-19. She is against using taxpayer money to open Wi-Fi centers for children that have been affected by the coronavirus shutdown. Our discussion on COVID will be moving on to talking about mental health, and this now-deleted post is a good transition for that. El Paso is using an emergency line to send COVID updates to residents. Due to social distancing and the stress that quarantine brought with job loss, increased domestic violence, and many other troubling things, we did see an increase in mental illness. This message shows information about getting help for mental health. Dealing with challenging emotions or situations in these times, reach out. You are not alone. And this was Hatch's response to it, calling it a fake mandate emergency alert, quote, saying, stop abusing the emergency alert system and stop acting as if y'all have the authority to do half of what you've been doing. In my opinion, this came across as a disregard for mental health. This year has been challenging for many people's mental health, and it's discouraging to see someone so passionately angry over a message that brings awareness to mental health and encourages people to ask for help. Why would you not want people to have this information? This post was deleted about an hour after it was posted, and this amended statement was put up in its place. The tone was completely different after she received some backlash on the original post, but I have a hard time believing she changed her mind so quickly. A few months later, she changed her position on mental health, discussing suicide rates and the effects of social media. But it's difficult to forget her quick reaction to the emergency alert on mental health. Blanco on mental health has been a big supporter of ending the stigma around mental illness, leading efforts to lower prescription drug prices and expand mental health resources to veterans as well as other people in the community. Working with Emergence Health Network to provide treatment to those affected by the August 3rd shooting and stress from COVID. Blanco has also stated that even though mental health is often blamed for mass shootings, research shows that those that suffer from mental health are more likely to be victims. Of course, mental health kind of bleeds into our next topic, which is LGBT rights. Blanco is a supporter of LGBTQ rights. He participated in the Texas House LGBTQ Caucus locally. He was vocal about defending State Rep Mary Gonzalez when State Rep Pat Fallon made a speech attacking her for her sexual orientation. Blanco is endorsed by EqualityTexas.org. I had not found Hatch to be anti-LGBT until a recent law was passed in California. Let me explain this new bill that was passed in California. In California, if a 19-year-old boy has consensual sex with a 17-year-old girl, the boy is not automatically registered as a sex offender for their relationship with an underaged girl. If a 19-year-old boy and a 17-year-old boy have consensual sex, then the older boy would be automatically registered as a sex offender. Based on this new law, the older partner is now not automatically registered as a sex offender. It's up to the judge based on the situation. 
creating equal judgment for straight or gay couples. Hatch did not voice an issue with this when it was in regards to a straight couple, and considering that Texas has a similar law, the Romeo and Juliet law, which she has not criticized, it does lead us to believe that her issue here is with LGBT couples. However, since she does state that minors are incapable of giving consent, it does make one wonder if elected would she try to repeal the Romeo and Juliet law here in Texas. When it comes to health care, Hatch falls in line with some extremely misguided groups that don't follow modern science, such as Dr. Emanuel, like I mentioned earlier. Hatch does seem to lean towards being an anti-vaxxer, but hasn't said so outright. She has stated that she will not push for any type of mandated vaccines. She's also been endorsed by a group that is anti-vaccine. Uh, she has also stated that she wants to fight to end the 10-day rule in Texas, a rule that provides families with the ability to move a family member on life support to another hospital when doctors do not want to continue to provide life support. I will link more information on that topic. Well, on the topic of health care, let's talk about abortion. Hatch is endorsed by Texas Right to Life, which is an extremist pro-life group. This group believes that hormonal birth control pills are a form of abortion. Of course, hormonal birth control pills are not only something that prevent pregnancy and therefore abortion, they also provide some extreme health benefits for many women. And this organization also claims that Planned Parenthood is harvesting organs from babies to implant them into rats and believes that modern vaccines are made using aborted babies, which is why they are against vaccines. Hatch did bring up that she had an issue with COVID patients being transferred to nursing homes after being discharged from the hospital. I was a little confused by this uh, since it is common for patients that were hospitalized to be transferred out to rehab facilities for further recovery. Uh, many of these people are just too sick after recovering from COVID to be sent home. Hatch believes that health care should not be provided by the government and that it should be a free market. Now going over to Blanco's stance on health care, Blanco wishes to expand Medicaid. He also wants to look into expanding telemedicine to improve access in rural areas and border communities. Blanco has put a lot of work into improvements in the education system, especially regarding teacher pay and access to health care. He helped pass a bill that will freeze TRS care premiums for the next two years and ensuring affordable health care for retiring teachers. Blanco has been an ardent supporter of the Paul Foster School of Medicine at Texas Tech in El Paso, saying that the school contributes to the local economy and will improve the physician shortage in West Texas and giving students an opportunity to apply to a medical school in their hometown. He is actively involved with organizations that aim to improve health care in this region. Both candidates want to take action against human trafficking. Hatch was part of an anti-human trafficking rally that I believe she helped organize. Blanco authored and passed House Bill 2059 that will focus on fighting human trafficking through the frontline health care workers. When it comes to immigration, Blanco is active in supporting immigration reform. He hosts workshops to help immigrants go through the steps of becoming citizens. At these workshops, legal advice is provided as well as translators. He also supports DACA and protecting the dreamers. And he believes in increased oversight over border security. Hatch believes in increasing border security and believes that this is the responsibility of the federal government, but that the states must act since the federal government is not providing enough. She also believes that the federal government should not be involved in trade between the state government and foreign countries. One of the most horrendous acts of violence locally in recent memory is the August 3rd Walmart shooting. We're going to be looking at what the candidates were doing on the one year anniversary of this tragedy. Blanco attended different memorials around town to honor victims. Hatch was in attendance of a local GOP celebratory event. When it comes to gun rights, Hatch is a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. This is probably one of her strongest campaign issues. She is against red flag laws and any other infringements on the Second Amendment. She spoke at the Texas House hearing in support of gun rights, and she encourages firearm training. Blanco has spent years calling for stricter gun control. He supports red flag laws, bans on assault rifles, and believes guns are too easily accessible in the community. 
He supports keeping guns out of the hands of convicted hate crime offenders and domestic abusers. He has written legislation that would ban high-powered magazines to be sold in the state of Texas and has asked for background checks to be required even on internet sales of guns. These, of course, have not passed. Blanco believes that Black Lives Matter and believes that reform includes rethinking the role of police, such as banning chokeholds, no-knock warrants, and qualified immunity. Blanco was included in with a group that sent a letter to the El Paso Mayor Leeser and City Council to, quote, publicly repudiate the statement forcefully and unequivocally when police chief Greg Allen called Black Lives Matter a racial hate group. Blanco was supportive of renaming Robert E. Lee Road to Buffalo Soldier Road in honor of black soldiers. Blanco did participate in local rallies for BLM. Hatch, on the other hand, organized a counter rally at the same time to support the police. Hatch is not a supporter of Black Lives Matter. She fully supports the police and local police chief Greg Allen. She was publicly critical of Commissioner David Stout participating in the memorial march that he described as for the 33 lives that have been lost at the hands of local law enforcement. I will say police brutality is not something common in El Paso, and I'm not sure exactly how these deaths were counted. Um, Something interesting to look into. She posted a screenshot of Apple's response to asking, where are the terrorists? When asked this prompt, Siri directs people to local law enforcement for support. Hatch was not satisfied with this response. Blanco is a former Stinger missile gunner and naval intelligence analyst. He is well known for being a supporter of military and veterans. He was listed in the top 10 best legislators of Texas for his speech on the House floor where he got both sides to vote for keeping the Hazelwood Act, a law that extends free college tuition for veterans and dependents. Blanco has been outspoken when it comes to Vanessa Guillen and the countless other lives that have been lost at Fort Hood. He plans to file the Vanessa Guillen Act that would address sexual assault in Texas military forces. Here's what he had to say about Vanessa. No soldier should fear retaliation and the negative stigma of reporting assault and harassment in the armed forces, Blanco said in a statement. Although Specialist Guillen was in the United States military, Texas can lead with reforms to protect our soldiers in the Texas military to ensure every Texas soldier feels safe reporting sexual assaults committed in the military and offenders are persecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Hatch is also a strong military and veteran supporter. When it comes to education, Hatch promotes school of choice. She is against standardized testing. When it comes to education, Blanco is very supportive of providing funding to teachers in schools. He co-sponsored a bill to gradually increase teacher pay over the next six years, as well as pay for other school employees. He has also worked to make the retirement program and health care for teachers more beneficial. Blanco opposes any school vouchers for private schools as he believes this eliminates public accountability and diverts taxpayer dollars away from public education. He does not support high-stakes standardized testing, but believes it should be used just as a diagnostic tool. For voting, Blanco supports mail-in voting to protect people from COVID. Hatch does not support mail-in voting, only voting in person. Blanco is endorsed by the Texas Democrat Veterans, Greater El Paso Association of Realtors, Latino Victory, EqualityTexas.org, Beto O'Rourke, Joe Moody, Mary Gonzalez, El Paso Sheriff Wiles, and more than a hundred other organizations and individuals. It does bring up the question, is Blanco endorsed by Mayor Margo? It would appear so when Mayor Margo sent out a letter where he addresses Blanco as Senator-elect. Hatch is endorsed by the Texas Right to Life, Republican Liberty Caucus of Texas, and the Husbeth County Sheriff. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you got to learn more about the candidates. Now, usually I do like to make it as unbiased as possible, but I think the most important thing is to provide all of the facts. And sometimes those two things are hard to do at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the video. And if you're willing to share, please let us know who you're going to be voting for. And be sure to share this video with family and friends so that they can make informed decisions when going out to vote. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.